I studied at Jiu-Jitsu High, and one thing that I learned is that Jiu-Jitsu sorcerers are shit. Then I worked at your typical company, and one thing I learned is that work is shit. Nanami is everyone's favorite salary man. He's experienced the facets of the Jiu-Jitsu Kaizen world from the perspective of a true human in the 21st century. He isn't gifted from the heavens like Gojo, and as a result, he stands as a middle ground to see the world from a regular corporate 9 to 5, or in his case, 10 to 6, but he's also seen the world from the eyes of a grade 1 jujitsu sorcerer. When I first came across Nanami while watching and reading JJK, his aesthetic immediately set him apart from the rest of the cast. He sports the aesthetic of a corporate worker, with a suit and a blazer. Recently graduating from college myself and starting a corporate job, I felt a connection to Nanami because he seems as realistic as can be in a world full of cursed spirits and energy. Nanami, likely similarly to the rest of us, hates work and he found himself after graduating Jiu-Jitsu High and transitioning to working for a corporation to pretty quickly feeling lifeless and weighed down from the mundane day-to-day -day practices of being an adult that robbed him of moments of his youth. His philosophy is that it isn't giant life-threatening experiences that propels us humans to grow into adulthood, but rather the buildup of inconveniences over time that gradually transforms us into adulthood. This leads Nanami, who was one of the mentors to our protagonist Yuji, to initially treat Yuji as a child because he doesn't want Itadori to throw away his youth for the sake of becoming a jujitsu sorcerer, even going so far as to say that jujitsu sorcerers are trash because they have to force their comrades to accept the notion that they must willingly sacrifice their lives, which is why he initially quit, or rather, he ran away. During his time as a salaryman, he never thought about his meaning of life or his purpose on earth. He instead focused on making enough money to retire and viewed having money as the end-all be-all, thinking of it day and night. Rather than focusing on the present, finding a purpose and existing, he thought about the end goals of retirement and thereby sacrificed his present youth in the pursuit of such ideals. Over time through his flashback that takes place while fighting Mahito, we see a poignant conversation with the woman who worked at a bakery who he'd continually see day in and day out and converse with her. And through conversation, he tells her how his position in the grand scheme of things as a salary man meant nothing at the end of the day. But her job truly has value and impact on the world. And despite this fact, he still somehow makes much more money, and he questions the efficacy of it. This questioning of the values he's had thus far leads us as an audience to understand his lamentation of the salary life. Yes, he'll make money, but at the end of the day, he isn't doing a damn thing. During this interaction, he exercises a flyhead curse on this young woman, and as he walks out, she thanks him, and he tells to himself, I don't need your thanks, I get enough already. And on that day, he calls Gojo to come rejoin the jiu-jitsu world, and has a monologue that he always thought that having a purpose in life had nothing to do with himself, but he was dead wrong. All the money in the world cannot fill the emptiness that working for something that has no inherent meaning brings. Nanami would rather fight for the common people of the world against evil, despite the idiocracy of it, risking his life in the process, because he has the ability to do so, and do something that's actually worth a damn. Outwardly, his appearance and demeanor is strict and professional, but Nanami is passionate and generous. He doesn't hide his intentions or what he cares about. He's brash and upfront. He's human. He struggles with finding the purpose of life even when he wasn't seeking a purpose to begin with. Wanting to escape the situation he was in within the jiu-jitsu world, he fled to a world where he thought he'd have control over things around him. But he can't escape the nature of his heart and his empathy, his generosity, and his desire to help. What he finds within Yuji that he believes to be worthy of being called a sorcerer is Yuji's characteristics of wanting to help others, despite knowing how thankless of a job being a sorcerer is and how much death and darkness awaits him. Yuji is simplistic, wanting to help others because he can, much like Nanami, and he wants to die with people around him. Nanami serves for us, the audience, to be a pillar of commonality, someone we can see ourselves within. We may work 8 to 5s, causing us to be empty and feel without purpose, but we still find ourselves dreaming of what could be. Whether that be our dream job, our ideal relationship, or even the simple state of being happy. Yes, money is important, of course, but there is far more inherent purpose and reason for living, especially in doing something beyond ourselves, particularly within helping others. And Nanami shows us just that. The beauty of Nanami exists within the realism he expresses towards us, the human we see within him. 
In a story of gods like Gojo Satoru, devils like Sakuna and Mahito, there truly exists a man seeking purpose in life and freedom to live boldly in a way that allows him to live beyond himself. If you enjoyed this discussion of the beauty of Nanami and the character he represents, please don't forget to leave any feedback below and subscribe, and let me know which Jujutsu Kaisen characters you want me to cover next. As always guys, be greedier, and I'll catch you all next time.